Yo, what up, y'all? It's your boy Dollars. Welcome back to the channel. It's another day, another dollar video. This time I'm reacting to the story of the rise and fall of Smoke Dog. Shout out to Hood Six for making this video. Um, I practically reacted to practically everything. Well, music like video wise of Smoke Dog, and I wish there was plenty more. You know, so I'm I'm definitely gonna check out like whatever tracks he got, audios and shit. So. If y'all know some dope audios from Smoke Dog that I haven't reacted to yet, let me know so I can react to react to it, man. Rest in peace to him. Very dope rapper. Um, one of my favorite artists from Toronto. And it's just sad, you know, it's sad what happened. I, I done spoke about it already a couple times, so I'm not gonna keep rehashing the same things over and over. But um I'm just glad to see this um little mini documentary and see what information we learn and and hear what hood six has to say about the rise and fall of smoke dog so let's hop in this joint get it out for those of you who don't know i already reacted to count it up it was blocked i reacted to letter to my ox and it was blocked um i'm gonna try to re-upload and see what happens um the thing is with the count it up one when i do my reactions after i upload them i delete them because i like to keep space on my pc like i don't like to have shit you know even though i have a lot of space i just like to always um keep my shit up to date and do maintenance on my computer but um yeah so i can't do the count it up one unless they unblock it because it's on youtube and i don't have a backup file so you know hopefully you know that changes in the future I don't know who I got to talk to. I mean, I spoke to Puffy L's. He said he was going to look into it. I'm not going to keep bothering the man about it. So hopefully that should have get resolved. Anyway, let's hop in this joint. Let's see what, what it's, you know, hitting for. Like, that was just a big moment for us. Like, we were on tour. We had a billboard out here in our city. Like, so, like, they're hearing our name and what we're doing. And then now they're seeing our faces up on, like, billboard. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's on Young Street because, like, we used to go there all the time, like me, my, me, Arno, even like TB, and his kid. Like I always, I remember taking trips with all of my 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 homies that passed away just to young. What up, the water man? Yeah, I mean, your fam. What up, fam? What up, video? Hello, gang. Yeah. Drip too much on the old women fam of the young sauce fam. She's gonna get overwhelmed. And is that his mom? Grief from the mother of a young Toronto rapper killed in a brazen shooting on Queen West Saturday. My condolences to his family and his friends. Those of you that know. know. Hey, what's up, guys? Now we gotta talk about the sad story of Smoke Dog. Now, 21 year old Javante Smart, or better known as Smoke Dog, is a Toronto rapper from the Regent Park area, a neighborhood that was the first and oldest projects built in Canada but was notorious for being a rough and crime ridden area. Recently, it even got worse to a point where they had to post bulletin notice within the neighborhood because of innocent people and even kids were being targeted and shot at for no reason. Now, in his earlier years, Smoke Dog grew up in a big family of 13. It's always the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, damn, nine in the belly. Uh, how many brothers? One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, a lot of brothers. Damn. Teen siblings, and those are Joanne Smart, aka 10K The Truth, Young Smoke, Andrew Douglas, also known as Ace, and Kimani Bent, to name a few. Now, the Smart family was well known in being very low key as well as talented, but I managed to find that at an early age, Smoke Dog took a shot at acting at just 14 years old, which later transpired in becoming a very successful rapper. While 10K back in the day was a well known hooper in the city with lots of potential, but later on involved himself and his brothers in the streets. Young Smoke that's crazy man they they were playing ball they was rapping like it seemed like that whole family had talent you know and hopefully young smoke can continue that legacy and carry the torch moving forward but um to, to know that the whole family was talented that's a crazy fact right there 
before rapping was holding down a regular job as a local mechanic, later on took on the spot for Smoke Dog, and for Kimani Bent, the younger brother, is another talented hooper in the family, listing at 6'3 in high school and has unlimited potential of making it to the league. Now from what I mentioned previously, you most likely assume that Smoke Dog has a perfect life with almost everything going well in his family, but unfortunately that wasn't the case as no, trouble wasn't far away from Smoke life. Dog at all. Even at an early age, Smoke Dog's own father, Wayne Sheldon Smart or better known as Duke, was unfortunately more heavily involved in the streets as he had a lot of run-ins with the law and one point he was reportedly found linked to five separate murders, which is unfortunate. Damn. Smoke Dog's dad was really out there smoking people. It's crazy. So it's not like he just was like his his family was already well established in the streets before he was even a rapper. But before Smoke Dog would ever touch a mic yet, he experienced a tragic loss through his struggle to glory, and that was losing his close friend TB. Now TB, or also known as Tyson Bailey, was a 15 year old football athlete who was well known and liked by everyone in his area. Rest but unfortunately, on January 18, 2012, he was shot to death on the 13th floor of 605 Wyside Place. What makes this story even crazier was that the killer hid in one of the many units of 605 Wyside Place before Toronto police arrived to the scene. This methodical move that TB's killer did made Toronto Police's job in solving the murder of Tyson Bailey a lot more difficult. As unfortunately, with not much evidence aside from a grainy camera footage, this resulted in his murder to go unsolved. Around this time, this is when Smoke Dog took his passion in rap a lot more serious, which ultimately led Smoke Dog in dropping his first collaboration track called Don't Get Close Freestyle I on October to that 19, not too long 2012, ago. which featured rappers like Roni and Sick. After a year later on November 2nd, 2013, Smoke Dog dropped yet another track called You Ain't About on YouTube. But he wasn't I only focused on too. music at the time, but decided to join a group called Wire In within the neighborhood, which later became a defunct group. And that's when Halal Gang took over. This group was well known to be involved in the streets, as well as documenting many times of retaliatory shootings and internal cleansings of other gangs within Regent Park. But regardless, many of the members were more focused on music, as it was their only way out from the street life. With other well known members like Moji, Ano, Capo, Puffy L's and SK to name a few. So everything was going well for Smoke Dog's career as both tracks hit well over 100k views on YouTube easily and gained him a lot of traction. This is when he continued to drop another track almost one year later called Listen, let's give a shout out to Hood6 because this video is very entertaining. He's doing a good job. Um, I believe he did the Young Lavo video that I reacted to and I know y'all wanted me to do the other one. But um, Hood6, I think he took my advice when I said to not use the robotic voice and use his real voice. And it sounds so much better. The video is very, you know, edited very well. Shout out to Hood6, man. This is a good video. I'm entertained so far and I'm, I'm loving the information and, and learning about, you know, uh, Smoke Dog and his peoples. Still featuring Ano and Moji on SoundCloud early 2014. This didn't stop Smoke Dog as he dropped yet another track called Gang on April 18, 2014 on YouTube. I'm but in this case, the track still was the one that gained him a lot of fame as well as recognition in the city. He also received a lot of support from the underground music scene. But unfortunately, another tragic event happened. Smoke Dog's other friend named Yusuf Ali, or also known as Ano, was found shot and killed in an alleyway in his own neighborhood of Regent Park. This was just two days hey, later after the boys, track bro. still dropped, which came to a shock for many members of Halal Gang. This including Smoke Dog as well, who was deeply hurt by the tragic news, as Ano was a well-respected individual and loved by many in his neighborhood, so it just didn't make sense. Ano's death was unfortunate because despite of the rumors circulating and mentioning that rival neighborhood Alexandra Park, of who they had a long-standing beef with, claimed to have killed Ano, taunting this very statement years later in the track Halal Meat. But that's completely false, as it was merely a deliberate move to promote their new track. As for the real truth, was that Ano and another individual from the bleaker neighborhood 
had a small dispute. That's when things escalated even further during this heated exchange and that's when the individual from Bleecker pulled out his gun and shot and killed Arnold. Now with that being said, going back to Smoke Dog and Halal Gang, this ultimately led members of Halal Gang to agree and drop the music video for the track still in honor of their late friend Arnold. Since Arnold was the one that paid for everything, including the studio session for the track. Damn man, rest in peace to Arnold man. He was the one funding the studio time, probably the videos, you know. When somebody takes a chance on your dreams and they willing to spend some money on y'all, you know he a real one, man. You gotta give it up, tip y'all hats to him. No wonder why they were so deeply affected by that loss. I wish y'all could see my letter to my ox reaction, bro. I don't know why my shit gets blocked and there's other people with their videos, but I I feel like that's one of my best realest reactions because I dropped so many, so many gems on that shit. And... Yeah, man, that shit is just crazy, bro. Surprisingly, this was a smart move for Halal Gang and Smoke Dog, as within less than a month, the track gained a million views on YouTube. Easily. A million views This in a is month? what effectively made it a Toronto summer anthem for many years. There was also another part of the music video that helped gain them a lot of traction and memes being created Drake and that was the him. famous Chernobyl dance by rapper Moji. Now this move got so popular in the city that everyone started to do the very same dance and later on putting on Instagram and promoting it even further and in some cases mm -hmm. even the rapper mm -hmm. top 5. Publicly this Moji at one point can be seen doing the Chernobyl dance as well. If this wasn't a product of- Son you know you lit. And you fucking influential when you got the top rappers copying your moves like Drake, top five doing it too. And I don't know if that was, that's probably before they had issues. Maybe they still had issues. That's probably way before. Yeah, it probably was before they even had beef. But that's how you know they definitely were making it. They, they became a household name just doing that Ginobili move dance it's crazy. Of a viral hit, then I can tell you this sensation even reached to a mainstream media. As arguably the biggest artist of the world, Drake, <laughs> Drake. without a doubt, borrowed the very same dance moves in his own music video, Hotline Bling, years later. With Smoke Dog coasting through his success and having the spotlight on him, he managed to secure his first show at the Mod Club, performing the viral hit still. This was a very big thing for most rappers in the city because Toronto police for many years have been shutting down shows and claiming it was inciting violence this would eventually trickle down to promoters now Yo, the cops be the biggest haters bro like these guys are trying to do something positive they trying to change their life and come out of their circumstances and you're gonna prevent them from making these moves that could change their life and get them out the hood but no you rather them stay in the hood doing destructive actions so you could lock them up like the cops be backwards bro like if you were so worried that these guys were gonna do something or have weapons on them then make sure you provide the proper security and and make sure you check everybody and metal detectors and all that it should be no excuses for y'all to shut down a show or prevent an artist from getting his bag and performing not booking rappers in the city at all I really count like one hand they don't let me have no shows in the city why robin i guess i had to yeah. book you and shit like yeah just the police shutting everything done. Can't this even didn't get a stop show Smoke Dog city, as bro. after a successful Corny. show in the 6, Smoke Dog dropped yet another viral hit called Trap House on July 2015. This is what officially stamped Smoke Dog's name in the music scene as well as took his rap career to a whole new level. Now before Trap House hit the internet, there was another name already buzzing in the city and that was Casper TNG. Now Casper dropped his own viral track called Doughboy on February 10, 2015. Imagine if Casper and Smoke Dog weren't beefing. Imagine if they made music together. Imagine that a Smoke Dog and Casper track. It's like the beef be robbing us of so much good like opportunities. You know, it's, it's crazy. Like, and it's like over nothing, man. Y'all beefing over territory, or my man's did this to your man's ten years ago. I mean, that's the streets, though. That's the streets. It's stupid, but it's like, man, we need, instead of destroying each other, we need to build together. Cause the man, and that's what they don't want us, man. The, the higher ups, the people above, the watchers, they don't want us to build together. So that's why they put all these distractions in the way and they give us the tools of our own destruction. 
which received a whopping 4.5 million views to this day. I mention this because Casper's be neighborhood I, of the game Alexander is missing Park, smoke, like though. I said before, had a like long-standing beef the with Regent Park, which dates back to the 80s and 90s. So there was a lot of animosity, but currently at the time it was not active like that. With some from both sides experienced casualties and bloodshed along the way, it still didn't kick off a whole gang war yet which I will explain further in the video. Around this time, the Toronto music scene was rapidly growing around 2014 to 2016, as well as artists in the city previously struggled to land some recognition. But now, this wasn't the case anymore, as newer and upcoming artists in the underground music scene started to finally receive the support they worked tirelessly for. Artists like Press Up, Books, 3M French, Top 5, Robin Banks, to name a few. But for Smoke Dog, he continued to grow and drop tracks consistently throughout the year of 2016, 17, and even 18, racking in millions of views on all his platforms and gaining large amounts of following. He even managed to land himself in interviews with Noisy, a popular media company, and started in a short documentary called Northside, which I highly recommend checking it out. Now, if that wasn't enough, Smoke Dog went to the UK and drop a viral freestyle called Are Fire in the Boots series with Charlie Slot, who's a well known UK radio host who have done countless Fire in the Boots with other famous artists like Pop Smoke, Little Baby, and Drake, to name a few. So, this definitely was a big deal to get his name heard around the world and even in the UK. Now, after creating a lot of buzz in the city and going to the UK to promote his songs and his upcoming studio album, Smoke Dog managed to link with Drake at the same time in Europe for the Boys Meet World tour and the various opening acts on several tour dates. Now this itself gave Smoke Dog a lot of exposure that was needed to solidify his name even further in the mainstream media but after the tour finished and everything else was settling down. That's when Smoke Dog went back to the 6th to celebrate his accomplishments. But unfortunately, there was a lot of jealousy and envy around the corner from the recognition he was getting worldwide. As the story goes, Smoke Dog was chilling in a restaurant with two females. This shit makes me realize that once you a popping rapper and you got a buzz and you fire and everybody's starting to hear your name, that's when you got to make the switch and move differently. Because look what happened, man. Smoke Dog was just starting. You know, he had a, some, he experienced success, but he, he didn't even really get to, he just got a, a piece of it. He didn't even get to taste the full fruits of his labor. And he was on his way to leveling up and actually being able to experience everything that comes with that success. He didn't even get a chance to, you know, look at Pop Smoke. Pop Smoke had his little success in the beginning. And he was just starting to really, really come into who he was and, and experience the success. Look what happened. You know, even though it's two different situations, it's still almost the same. Two hot rappers just starting to get on. And they get their life taken away. So that's why if you guys got a rapper that's buzzing, make sure you're moving right, man. Make sure you're moving right until you actually secure the resources and the finances to make sure you always straight no matter where you at, you know. But that's it's unfortunate, man. And after they got done, they started to head outside. That's when two mass assailants came around and sticked up Smoke Dog, demanding for his chain. That's when Smoke Dog complied and handed over his chain to the robbers. Now, you're probably wondering why didn't Smoke Dog fight back in this situation, and that was because of two reasons. One reason was because before this event even happened, his older brothers 10k and A strongly advised Smoke Dog not to carry a stick to avoid fucking up his rap career. Another reason is that the streets knew was that Smoke Dog jammed the next max chain previously, who was also from the same neighborhood as Smoke Dog. So at mm. the end, Smoke Karma? Dog decided it wasn't worth the struggle to fight for it. And Listen, man. I know gangsters like to... I said gangsters. Rappers like to portray that they're gangsters. They want to act like they'd never been robbed or they, they couldn't get robbed. At the end of the day, a chain could be replaced. Your life can't, you know? People act like, oh, if you take, if you if you lose a chain, that's like the biggest loss. No, fam, you could get another chain. Next time, just learn to be aware of your surroundings and move accordingly. But you know that shit, that shit don't mean nothing, bro. Like, if you lose a fight, that don't mean nothing. If you get robbed, that don't mean nothing, bro. You know, you come back and fight. The, if you live to fight another day, you won. You know, so don't let that go over your head. Handed over the chain to the assailants. 
Surprisingly, no one in the public knew about the situation until multiple videos surfaced weeks later, especially on DJ Academic's YouTube page and on social media as well, covering the story of how Smoke Dog's chain got snatched and was going on a greasy neck-to-neck -neck tour. Smoke Dog's chain can be seen on fellow rival rapper from the Alexandra Park neighborhood named Finale Stacks. This event left Smoke Dog in being ridiculed with memes and his ops taunting him for weeks. Things like posting with his chain in pictures to even cameos in two music videos. One named Halal Meat featuring Rolex Hami and Mr. Comfortable and also in another track called Facts both combined a whopping 1.6 million views on YouTube. All this through cloud chasing Smoke Dog's name. Now it doesn't take a genius to figure out that for every action has a reaction and that is the butterfly effect. This yes. event is what kicked off an intense bloodbath in Toronto history with the rise of retaliatory shootings to occur frequently and the murder rate to slowly creep up to records high, much higher than New York's murder rate in 2018. Now Smoke Dog was careful about the situation by keeping it to himself and focusing on music, dropping songs like Papa Perk, Snow, as well as Happen, of which you can visibly see he rocks a much different ch That song with Presser, I love that song. I know y'all, some of y'all wanted me to react to it, but I, if I listen to it already, I'm not gonna react to something I already listened to. All my reactions are authentic, feel me? Like every time I react to something, that's my first time watching it or hearing it, unless I say otherwise. Cause I did like throwback reactions to old 50 Cent Lloyd Banks songs that I seen years ago, you know, but I'll let y'all know, I give y'all a disclaimer, but um, that song is hot. That Press of Smoke Dog song, I fucks with it heavy. That's definitely in the rotation chain but this didn't stop rivals from alexandra park to continue to clown smoke dog all through social media as now casper came into the mix and dropped his own songs like all your friends are dead and burberry closet where you clearly can see casper dissing smoke dog's dead friends to his lyrics and rocking smoke dog's chain in clear 4k now fast forwarding to 2018 after many months of sending shots back and forth on both sides Casper TNG's house in Alexandra Park got shot up in retaliation for disrespecting Smoke Dog's dead friends through his songs and social media. But in this case, it made Casper even more upset as Smoke Dog was continuing to elevate even further and continued to receive major cosigns from people in the music industry. This is what led both Casper and K Money to head out to the neighborhood of Regent Park and fire a couple of I seen that Trap Geek video, that's why I never reacted to that either. I know y'all asked me to check it out. Where he said they was like on some fast and furious shit, driving down one ways. They was zanned up, ready to shoot, like looking for somebody to shoot. Uh, so the beef with Casper, Casper and Smoke, that was just over some like hood shit, like neighborhood shit. It don't seem like it was anything that ever happened personally, you know, until, you know, you start shooting up cribs, then okay, now, now we, we is, is lit, but. It seems like that what led to the disses and the diss songs, it wasn't nothing that was a personal shit. It was like neighborhood type beef, who knows. But we do know that his brother, Smoke Dog's brother, went on a rampage after that. You know, I know a kid, innocent kid got hit. You know, and that's nobody ever wants that to happen. I mean, it happens though. And it's messed up that it happens, but you, I can't get mad at Smoke Dog's brother for wanting to revenge his brother you know any real brother would want that like oh you killed my little brother what you think it's gonna stay that way so you gotta look at it from both sides nobody wants the innocent people to get caught up in it though that's when you know that's when we look at look at it differently but still but in this case it made casper even more upset as smoke dog was continuing to elevate even further and continue to receive major cosigns from people in the music industry this is what led both casper and k money to head out to the neighborhood of regent park and fire a couple of shots in broad daylight all this just to prove that they was outside and not hiding from their ops. This is what led on to what we now know as the infamous high speed chase with Toronto police in downtown Toronto. Yeah, in a surprising out. chess move by Smoke Dog exactly two months later after the arrest of K Money and Casper. Smoke Dog dropped a highly controversial track called Fountain Freestyle where parts of the music video Smoke Dog can be seen taking jabs at Casper and his brother K Money further taunting him through his lyrics. Another thing that was also shocking at first was that parts of the music video was shot at Casper's neighborhood of Alexandra Park. This was an unexpected move from Smoke Dog as many fans thought it was unnecessary as Smoke Dog was already a well established artist than most rappers in the city at the time. 
time, but this move itself would be seen as the start of the downfall for the rapper Smoke Dog. On a hot summer day on June 30, 2018, Smoke Dog decided to head to downtown to Cube Nightclub with a female acquaintance and his friend Ernest Madoque, also known as Kosi or Copa Prime. Once they reached their destination right by Queen and Peter Street, they headed inside. And once several hours passed by, that's when all three individuals, Smoke Dog, Copa, and the female all headed outside to leave. That's when a tinted dark SUV quickly pulled up to the curb and inside was Abdul Qadir Hunduli, also known as 21 Neat, and a youth beside him named Keishan Jones. That's when Smoke Dog and 21 Neat exchanged a few words and during the heat of the moment 21 me yelled out five words and that was go get your chain back this immediately angered smoke dog as he was already strapped up reaching for his gun at his hip but before he could do that that's when multiple shots were fired at smoke dog and two other individuals leaving them critical see that's a critical key information right there i never knew he had it on him smoke dog had it on him when that shit happened to him I never knew that. That's crazy. But at least he had it on him, but he didn't get a chance to use it. But damn. See how words could create so much drama over words. Go get your chain back. I mean, anybody would be tight. And if you got it on you and somebody gets you mad, that's a recipe for disaster. But it's just... It's just it's frustrating bro it's infuriating like all oh, this you know we lost a star for dumb shit now quickly injured 21 neat and kj quickly sped off as toronto police arrived to the scene of the shooting unfortunately for smoke dog as within minutes later succumbed to his injuries and was pronounced deceased bystanders nearby can be seen shocked with no words Broad while other recording smoke dog's dead body on the ground only to post it on social media later on that's actually fucking, I don't want to look at that, that's actually changed it a little bit. He's done, so. They say they want to look at that. After many months passed by, Toronto police was able to get a breakthrough in the murder of Smoke Dog and Cobra Prime. Upon investigation, they were able to link 21 Neat and KJ as prime suspects for the murder. Though finding them both wasn't an easy task, as 21 Neat and KJ both flew out of the city before Toronto police could box them in. But finally, after one year later passed on August 23rd, 2019, Vancouver? that's when 21 Neat was finally arrested by RCMP officers back in Burnaby, BC, almost 4,000 kilometers away from the crime scene back in Toronto, of which he was extradited back and facing additional charges of kidnapping and forcible confinement that he committed in BC while being on the run. As for KJ, he's yet to be caught as he continues to hide and invade police. Wow. Rest in peace to those who lost their lives in the story I mentioned, and my condolence goes out to the family and friends of Smoke Dog and Cobra Prime. Hope you liked the video I made. Leave a comment down below of what story I should cover next. Make sure to like and subscribe. Thanks. Candy, anyone? Yo, Hood 6, this was a great video, brother. I was thoroughly entertained. Um... I, I, I was appreciating the information this was this is your best video so far brother shout out to him hood six shows a lot of love i speak to him and uh, he don't even know i was gonna react to this i never told him but i did wanted to check it out because it was an interesting story anything with smoke dog i always want to check out and um one thing i wanted to mention it seems like somebody must have tipped 21 need and his boy off Cause how are you gonna just pull up on Smoke Dog out of nowhere? So somebody in the club must have seen Smoke Dog in there and called somebody, or somebody posted it on social media and they knew where he was at and they pulled up and then that's what happened. So, you know, when y'all go to these clubs, man, it was just him and his boy and a girl. When you at that level already, you know, he's a big rapper. You're a star already. You have to have the, the proper team around you. I don't care if it's security, your homies. You can't be by yourself, bro. That's the price of fame, you know? You can't go nowhere by yourself because you're going to have fans, you know, taking pictures, posting it on social media. And if you have ops, they're going to know where you at. So you got to always make sure that you have the proper arrangements. You can't, like, that's the price of fame, bro. You won't be by yourself anymore unless you freaking go somewhere shopping and you got a mask and hoodie and you really low key but if you go to the public places and people know who you are 
it's easy for people to find you bro and yeah like i said i feel like the game is missing smoke those energy his music right now you know it's like a he's definitely missed you know and i'm just starting to get on recently i've been getting on to the music recently and i feel that i could feel the loss already because i fuck with smoke dog i like his music and i wish i could get more of that like i want to hear more of his music you know and it's unfortunate but you know hopefully the young kids could learn from this you know don't let these deaths be in vain don't let these experiences go in vain learn from it so you don't follow the same footsteps so you could actually progress in life and and do the things that you want to do anyway i'm done talking it's your boy dollars if you enjoyed the reaction please hit the like button subscribe follow me on facebook instagram twitter and tiktok it's your boy i'm out